السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله all praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his household his companions may Allah bless them all and bless every one of us and grant us all forgiveness on this beautiful 21st eve of this lovely month of Ramadan. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Oh Allah, you are most forgiving. You love to forgive. So forgive us. My brothers and sisters, there is a dua that is made, a supplication by the angels. They continue making a dua for forgiveness for certain believers. Now, there are some people who may not be included in this dua. We need to know, why do the angels make this dua? They know the anger of Allah. They know the wrath of Allah. They also know the mercy of Allah and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they continue asking Allah to forgive certain categories of people. It's important for us to save ourselves from being rejected from this dua from being people who are not included in this dua by knowing what characteristics we need in order to be included. So the angels make a dua. What do they say? Let's go into Surah Al-Mu'min, which is also known as Surah Ghafir. It has two names. Some of the surahs have more than one name. So it is known as Surah Al-Mu'min, Surah number 40 of the Quran, and it is also known as Surah Ghafir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the angels say to him, verse number seven, رَبَّنَا وَسِعْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمًا O oh, our Rabb, you have encompassed everything with your mercy and your knowledge. Your mercy encompasses everything. You are merciful. That mercy includes every single aspect. And your knowledge includes every single thing. It encompasses absolutely everything. فَاغْفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكَ So, oh Allah, forgive those who are seeking forgiveness. Forgive those who are repenting and who have followed your path. Brothers and sisters, you need two qualities. You want to be included in this dua. It is a long dua. I'm going to take a few moments to tell you the entire dua. This evening, we are going to be delighted to know that the angels pray for us constantly. But the angels are telling Allah, Oh, our Rabb, forgive those who are seeking forgiveness. Oh, our Rabb, forgive those who are seeking forgiveness. You are most merciful. You are most knowledgeable. Forgive those who are seeking forgiveness. Amazing. If I'm seeking forgiveness, there are angels telling Allah, Oh, Allah, forgive him. He's asking for forgiveness. Don't we feel so hopeful? Subhanallah. Allah says it here. The angels are saying, Oh Allah, you have in, your mercy and knowledge has encompassed everything. So forgive those who are seeking forgiveness and who are following your path. sabilaka. They are following your path. They are trying their best to be the best of people. The question is, and I need to ask myself, am I trying my best? That's the question. Am I trying my best? If the answer is yes, Alhamdulillah, I'm included in the dua of the angels. But if I'm not, then I need to do better to save myself from being excluded. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may Allah grant us ease. Let's continue with the same dua. The angels don't just stop there. They say, Waqihim adhab al jahim. Oh Allah, save them from the punishment of hellfire. Al jahim referring to hellfire. Oh Allah, save those who have repented and who are following your path from hellfire. So they are saying, forgive them. And grant them savior from hellfire. Subhanallah. How fortunate are we? This is in Surah Mu'min. Surah Al-Mu'min. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this. And the, it continues. Subhanallah. Verse number 8. رَبَّنَا وَأَدْخِلْهُمْ جَنَّاتِ عَدْنِنِ الَّتِي وَعَدْتَهُمْ O our Rabb, grant them the paradise that you have promised them. The angels are constantly calling out to Allah. Oh Allah, people who have these two qualities, give them the Jannah and the paradise that you have promised them. What are the two qualities? They seek your forgiveness and they try their best to follow your path. They are following the path. So oh Allah, forgive them, 
Have mercy on them. Protect them from the fire. Grant them the Jannah that you promised them. Now imagine you were going to Jannah. In Jannah, what would happen? Subhanallah, may Allah take us all to Jannah al Firdaus. Many people would miss their family members, their children, perhaps their parents, their wives, etc. You might miss, you know, your family members. So the angels, they say, Oh Allah, not just them. But give Jannah to Firdaus to all those who are good enough to get into Jannah from amongst their parents and their spouses and their progeny, their offspring. So it means you will be with your family members in Jannah on condition that they too have tried to follow the path. This is why the term woman salaha, it actually means those who are good enough to go. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all good. If you want to be together with your family members in Jannah, you all need to work together for the same goal. Like we have a family business. And how proud is a father who says, I've got six sons, they're all in my business. Mashallah. Father, piece of advice, before you pass away, you better sort matters out, inshallah, if you want those children still to remain united after you've gone. That's just a side piece of advice because we've seen through our experience in almost all cases that family fragments later. But I promise you in Jannah, there is no fragmentation. There is no politics in Jannah. Nobody is going to want what the other one has because he will have whatever he wants. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. It's amazing. So my brothers and sisters, Jannah al Firdaus is what we are aiming for. In this world, we will struggle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that we will struggle. But I tell you, the dua of the angel continues, helping us through our struggles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 9, the angels, they are calling out to Allah on our behalf. What do they say? Oh Allah, protect them from committing sin. Protect these people from committing sin. They are seeking forgiveness. They are following the path. Grant them all these things and help them, save them from sin. Imagine the angels are asking Allah to save the mu'mineen from sin, those who are seeking forgiveness, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. My brothers and sisters, we need to feel this. So one might ask, how do I feel it? You feel it by trying your best. When you try, you can feel a closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you don't try, how do you expect to feel a closeness to Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal? Let's move on, subhanallah. In this surah, it is named Al-Mu'min, meaning the believer. Because in the family of the Pharaoh, there was one person who secretly accepted the message of Musa alayhi salam and he became a Muslim. So Allah refers to him in this beautiful surah and the surah has a name after him. What was his job? What did he do? He used to go to the family members and say, hey, you better listen to this man. Stop abusing him. Stop insulting him. If he is lying, it's against him. And if he is telling the truth, then you know what? You may well just be punished. So there was a person from the family of the Pharaoh who was siding with Musa alayhi salam. From this, we learn something very interesting. Always, when there is truth and falsehood, Allah chooses whomsoever he wishes to uphold, uplift and support the truth. And those who are at a loss are the ones who support the opposition or the ones who support that which is false and incorrect. And you never know who can stand up to support the truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to stand up for the truth. And we stand up for the truth in a beautiful way. Remember my brothers and sisters, wherever there is a dispute, wherever there is right and wrong, we as human beings have been given the power and ability by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to think, to be able to resolve a matter rather than to deal with it in a way that creates bigger problems. Remember this my brothers and my sisters. We are going to come to that perhaps later on this evening or tomorrow. But let's move on. This is Surah Al-Mu'min. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 60, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ Your Rabb has said. Now we need to listen. What has our Rabb said? Who is our Rabb? Our Rabb is Allah. Our Rabb is Allah. So verse number 60, Allah says, Your Rabb has said, أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Call out to me. I will respond to you. Call out to me. I will indeed respond to you. Now my brothers and sisters, from this verse we learn, 
we have to call out to Allah. Calling out to Allah is actually worshipping Allah and placing your worship exactly where it belongs. I call out to Allah. So Allah says, call out to me. I hear, I will respond. But Allah replies in a better way than we think we want him to reply. Sometimes we ask Allah for something. He knows it's not good for you. He knows, but we keep on. It's not wrong to continue to ask because we obviously don't know the future. But if Allah, as a result of your dua and constant dua, does not give you something, you need to be convinced that in the long term, it was better for me not to have it. Remember this. Many of us say, oh Allah, you know the dua of istikhara? It says in it, if, the, if you know in your knowledge that this is good for me, then make it easy for me. And if you know in your knowledge that this is bad for me in every way, then keep it away from me. And after we make the dua, we come back and we say, I've been praying for this, but Allah hasn't been, given me, been giving me. Hang on. Do you know what you said? You said, oh Allah, if it's not good for me, keep it away from me. So if Allah is keeping it away from you, you need to be convinced that it was not good for you. That's why he kept it away from you. But the problem with us, we say that to Allah and still we want it our own way. And we still get upset. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. And may the goodness in the eyes of Allah be similar goodness that we would like in our lives. Wherever Allah has not given us something, may he convince us that indeed it was perhaps not the right time or not the right thing for us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us content. We move on to the next surah. It's called Hamim as Sajda, or it's also known as Surat Fusilat. Now, what has happened in this particular beautiful surah? Like I say, we're talking about uh, saving ourselves. At the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the most eloquent of Quraysh, they knew that this Quran was something beyond man. They knew it. But they were too arrogant to admit it. So they heard the message of the Quran. They did not want to accept it. Abu Jahl, Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraiq, Abu Sufyan, the others, Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, and so on. These people were the cronies of Mecca at the time. What did they do? They wanted to harass Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa They were jealous that he came up with speech that was far more powerful than the most eloquent of the lot amongst the Meccans. So what did they do? They used to tiptoe at night to listen very carefully. What is he saying? They used to derive sweetness from this beautiful Quran and they used to bump into each other and promise each other, hey, how dare you go to listen to this man at night? And they say, but that's exactly what you did. Well, we're not supposed to be doing this. We are the leaders. Imagine if the povo see us going to listen to this word. What are they going to think? So as a result, they sent one of them to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and they told him, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, stop saying what you are saying. What do you want? Now remember something, a religious person is not after materialistic items. He's not after power. He's not after wealth. He's not after position. He's supposed to be after delivering the message. Whether the people like it or don't like it, for as long as it was delivered in a beautiful way, as per the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the job is done. Allah says, in alayka illa al Your duty is only to convey the message. You don't have to get something from the people. Sometimes what happens when the wealthy have a problem, some of those who are connected to knowledge happen to side with them because they feel that maybe if we don't side with the wealthy, maybe the door might close. I promise you a true scholar of Islam is he who does not mind losing a relationship with a wealthy man based on justice. It's okay. Allah will open another 20 doors when one has closed. Trust me. Justice is justice and the best of justice is when it is served to the weakest of the lot in a way that they are made honorable in the eyes of those who have power and wealth and they begin to know that justice has absolutely no lines. This is what Islam is. So my brothers and sisters, the same applies. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he did not mind losing those who were powerful and wealthy in Mecca. They threatened him. He didn't mind the threats because he had to obviously fulfill this beautiful message. They came to him, they told him, if you want power, we make you our leader. If you want to be the king, we make you our king. If you want wealth, we make you the wealthiest of the lot. If you are after women, we marry you with whoever you want, you choose, and they will all be yours. What would you like? We just want you to stop calling out against our idols and telling people to worship one God. What is all this? Muhammad was silent. He just heard. He just heard this entire 
entire lecture from one of these leaders of Quraysh. And thereafter, he told him, are you done? Are you done? Have you said your piece? Yes, he said his piece. Okay, I want to tell you, if you were to put the sun in my right hand, which means give me everything, and the moon in my left, and you were to ask me to stop calling out towards one God, I would never do that. And he began to recite the opening verses of Surat Fussilat. Hamim tanzilum min ar-Rahman ar-Rahim kitab fussilat ayatuhu Qur'anan arabiyya liqawmi ya'lamun bashiran wa nadhira fa'arada akhtaruhum fahum la yasma'un and he continued he continued these verses I want you to go back home tonight to open surat fussilat which is uh, surah, surah number 41 of the Quran and read. The Prophet ﷺ continued reading. This man was in awe. He was just listening. And read the verses until he got to a certain verse, verse number 13. So he read 12 whole verses. Verse number 13 was too much for this man to handle. He blocked the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, stop, stop, it's enough, stop. And he ran away. So what was that verse? Wouldn't you like to know what was the verse that shook them all up? They knew. فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا فَقُلْ أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ صَاعِقَةً مِثْلَ صَاعِقَةِ عَادٍ وَثَمُودٍ if they turn away, warn them of a punishment similar to the punishment of Ad and Thamud, a huge tremor or a quake similar to that of Ad and Thamud, immediately they said, stop, stop, stop. We don't even want to know what was the punishment of the previous nations because they don't want to be punished. How many times when people tell us what's right and wrong, we don't want to hear. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. It's okay because we are guilty. That's why. When a person is guilty, he doesn't like to hear what's right and wrong sometimes. Someone says, you know, my brother, this is the, hey, look, keep quiet. Don't even tell. I don't even want to know. Who are you? My, even my father doesn't say this. That's how people answer sometimes, you know. But this is the guilt. My brothers and sisters, let's save ourselves by listening to what happened to the people of the previous nations and taking heed. What was the punishment of Ad and Thamud? Allah says, we destroyed them. Allah says, this is what they did. And we gave them time. We've given you time. In that time, Turn to us. We will not destroy you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. What a beautiful lesson we learn from this surah, surah Fussilat, and the way it was recited to the kuffar of Quraysh and what had happened. Now, you and I know that in Islam, we are supposed to be preparing for the hereafter as well. It's not just luxury in this world. It is, yes, in this world we have to live, so we will earn and we will try our best. We will have a life of comfort, inshallah, as far as we can. By the will of Allah, different people will be different. For some people, even if they're in an air-conditioned home, they feel uncomfortable. And others, even if they're in a tent, they are so, so comfortable. So it all depends on what you have gotten yourself used to. But, my brothers and sisters, we know the more important preparation is for the hereafter. That we all know. The more important preparation is for the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something. He says, who can there be better in speech than the following person? You want to know who's the best person? The best? The same surah tells us, verse number 33. Who can there be better in speech than the one who has three qualities in him? The one who calls out to Allah. The one who invites everyone to Allah. He keeps on using his mouth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's calling out to Allah. Da'a ila Allah. And he does good deeds himself. He tries. We spoke about trying, didn't we? He tries his best himself. And he says, I am from among the Muslimin. I belong to the Muslims. What do you belong to? You belong to La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. What do I belong to? I belong to La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. The best person, according to this verse, is he who calls towards Allah, who does good deeds and affiliates himself with what is known as Muslim. 
قَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Someone says, what are you? I'm a Muslim. But, but, but what Muslim? I'm a Muslim. But, but, but I mean, you know, like what Muslim? But I'm a Muslim. You stay firm on that, my brothers and sisters. You are Muslim. You don't need to divide and fragment the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. This verse is powerful, wallahi. And this is why I always use this verse when people say, but you're a Muslim. But what Muslim? But I'm a Muslim. But what Muslim? I'm a Muslim similar to the one mentioned in verse number 33 of surah number 41, where Allah says, وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ How dare you want me to say something beyond that when I'm a Muslim? Allah says it clearly. There is no one better than he who repeatedly states, states that he's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be firm. And may he make us from those who have knowledge and who are close to him and his messenger and all the sahaba radiallahu anhum. May we be from among those who really respect every one of these champions who were companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Starting with Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, Umar ibn al-Khattabi radiallahu anhu. These were the superheroes of Islam. They were the champions. They struggled. They strove over the years to bring the deen to us. We can only love them. We will never become jealous of them. We will never become jealous of those who were chosen by Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us even amongst ourselves. We should never be jealous of one another. One person Allah may use, one person Allah may not use and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to grant us goodness for as long as we are alive and may He grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Brothers and sisters, I move on to the next surah. We read it this evening in Salat al-Taraweeh, Surah to shura The shura meaning the consultation. The names of these surahs are very interesting because they highlight a very important aspect of the surah. In your life, in my life, many important things that I may undertake, I may plan, it's important to consult those who are qualified and who care. Two qualities. You need sincerity and qualification. You want to do something, ask those who care for you. And at the same time, they are qualified regarding the topic you are asking about. You want to get married, Ask those who love you. Ask those who care for you. And those who are experienced, they will, uh, they will give you guidance and guidelines because it's a big topic. You want to start up a big business, you ask those who are genuine. Don't ask someone who's an expert but he doesn't like you. He will intentionally give you bad advice. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. In this beautiful surah, Allah tells us so many things. One of them is that if someone is to work for the hereafter, we will give them we will give them the due that they have worked for. And if someone works for this worldly life only, we will give them the worldly life. And in the Akhirah, they have nothing. So we have three choices. One is, you work for the dunya alone and you have nothing in the Akhirah. Two is, you work for the Akhirah alone, alone, you will get the Akhirah, you may not achieve much of the dunya. But the third is, you work for the Akhirah in proportion and the dunya while you are preparing for the Akhirah so that you can enjoy what is called the dunya, the hasana in the dunya and the hasana in the Akhirah. The goodness in the dunya and the goodness in the Akhirah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this. And then he says to us, if he wanted, he could have made everybody wealthy. So people ask, well, why didn't he? You know, Allah is the owner, isn't it? Allah owns everything. Why didn't he make everyone wealthy? Why are some people poor, some people wealthy, some people super rich, and some people, they are in debt since they were born? May Allah forgive us. May Allah help those who are in debt to pay their debts. Amen. So Allah explains why. Allah says, if we made everyone wealthy, there would have been lots of transgression on earth, fighting and killing on earth. Because everyone would be so rich, then what's remaining? Competition. When you compete with each other, you start writing off people. You start ticking off people. This one, I'm going to eradicate him. You know, it becomes mafia business because now everyone is very, very wealthy. So Allah says, وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِهِ لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ يُنَزِّلُ بِقَدَرٍ مَا يَشَاءُ If Allah wanted or if Allah had given wealth all over to everyone the people would have transgressed so that is the reason why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent it down 
in due measure, in proportion. He's given very little to some and a little bit more to some so that each one is tested, some with more and some with less. And from this verse, what I learn is when Allah has given you, the test is greater than when he has not given you. When Allah has given you, the test is far greater than when he has not given you. When he has given you, do you become arrogant? Do you become even a fraction in terms of haughtiness, in terms of pride, in terms of superiority complex? Do you have that? If you do, go back. You've been tested. Your test is tough. Don't fail the test, my brothers, my sisters. Humble yourself. Come right down to ground level. When you have been given a lot, go beneath the ground, subhanallah, in humbleness and humility. People must never be able to tell this man who walks all over the show. You know, that's not how it should be. It should be, mashallah, I didn't even know. Subhanallah. Look at the brother. He's there in salah. He greets everyone. He talks. He interacts. He has such a beautiful character. Because I tell you, shaitan's plan, when, when we've been blessed by Allah, shaitan makes us become different from the rest sometimes. Why? I don't know interaction. No, not these. I can't even mix with them. I can't even shake their hands. I can't do this. I can't do that. No. These are your brothers and sisters. Allah says, if we want, we can swipe. Whatever we've given you in a flash, we can do it. Allah has done it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. We've seen people from riches to rags in split seconds, I promise you. Split seconds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So when Allah's given you, be humble. That's what I learned from this verse. Because Allah says, had we given, they would have become all transgressors. But we have held back so that they call out to us. They depend on us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may Allah make us always from those who realize and understand. My brothers and sisters, we move even further. Did you know that if you remember Allah, you stand a better chance to be within good company? If you remember Allah often and by remembrance of Allah, meaning you're conscious of Allah, whatever I do, I think of Allah. So my salah, I go. By default, you're going to meet people who are in salah. Those who read Salah often in the masjid, you know the clique who are in the masjid, don't you? You know these people are always there. In the first half, oh, I'm going to meet this brother. This is going to happen. I know that brother's going to be there. Because why? You are all doing good things together. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. And this is why there is a greater chance that you will be in good company. But Allah says, those who forget us, those who don't remember us, those who turn away from us, we appoint for them in their company and companionship a devil, a shaitan. Listen to the verse. Verse number 36 of Surah Zukhruf, which is the Surah number 43 of the Quran. Allah says, وَمَن Whoever turns away from the remembrance of Allah, we appoint for them a shaitan. So he becomes his companion. You didn't remember Allah, turn back to Allah, remember Allah, seek Allah's forgiveness and the shaitan will depart. Good things will become easy for you to do and bad things will become difficult for you to do. Why? Because you're remembering Allah and you're in good company. But when you don't remember Allah, the bad things are so easy. They can be done. And the good things you feel so lazy to do them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. I actually want to go back into the previous a surah, the surah that I was speaking about was surah to shura, surah number 42 of the Quran. I spoke about the verse where Allah speaks about giving and why he did not give. Thereafter, there is a very, very important point that Allah raises. Some people get married. Some don't have children. Some have children. Some male, some female. Allah says, you must be convinced that Allah has given you what is the best for you. Keep on calling out to Allah. Keep on trying to get what you want. But if you're a believer, you must be absolutely convinced that Allah is alimun qadir. Allah is all knowledgeable, all able. What he gave you is the 
best, best, best for you. So if you don't have children, there was nothing better than that for you. That is your paradise. Because ultimately when you die and the sabr is calculated, it will be so much that for you may be paradise without even reckoning. And that was because you bore the patience because you didn't have children. And if Allah gave you only girls, be the happiest person on earth. If Allah gave you only boys, be super excited and thankful to Allah. And if Allah gave you a mixture of both, be super thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what Allah has given you, be thankful. Allah says, verse number 70 of this beautiful verse, Lillahi mulku samawati wal ard. Indeed, Allah owns whatever is in the heavens and the earth. Yakhluqu ma yasha. He creates whatever He wills. Yahabu liman yasha inatha. He gives whomsoever He wills only females. Wa yahabu liman yasha udhukur. And He gives whomsoever He wills only males. Or he might give some male and female. Subhanallah. Or and whomsoever he wishes, he may keep them without children. For indeed, innahu alimun qadir. He is most knowledgeable. He is most powerful. The point is, be happy with the decree of Allah and you will save yourself from depression and stress in this regard. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us happy with his decree at all times. May he help us to understand his plan for indeed his plan is far higher than anything we can plan. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallahi bihamdih subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.